This year more than any, all eyes are on Apple's new generation SoCs. Not only are we expecting these chips in iPhones and iPads, but they'll also set the foundation for Apple's expansion into laptop and desktop CPUs. Today, we're gonna talk about everything we know so far. So let's talk about A14. It's this year's generational improvement over the A13 that we have in the iPhone 11 series. Uh, what's going on? Hi, it's me, Fancy Luke. I'm commandeering this video to talk to you about today's video sponsor, Hawthorne, a premium cologne brand. Getting your very own custom scent is super easy with Hawthorne. You just have to- Dude, what the heck? You totally interrupted me. You're supposed to do those at the beginning of the video. What are you doing? You just have to take their quick quiz and answer a couple of questions about your hygiene, such as how often you shower, your skin and hair type, and even your favorite drink. Hawthorne will then pick out the best scents for you, and if you're not happy, they'll retailer them based on your feedback. With the link in the description below, you can use code LUKE10 to get 10% off your first order. So check out Hawthorne today. Are you done? Yeah, that's mostly it. They smell really good, by the way. Yeah, I'm sure they do, but... Okay, yeah, that does smell really good. I told you. Okay, anyway, Apple has been making their own custom silicon since the A4 chip came out in the iPad and the iPhone 4 in 2010. And over those past 10 years, they've become quite good at it. For today's discussion, we're gonna break it down into two main parts. First is, what do we know about the A14 for iPhones? And then, what do we know about the A14X for iPad Pro or lower end MacBooks. Now at this point I have to put a disclaimer because I'm going to be referring to A14X here as a placeholder. There have been reports that A14X was going to be used in a couple of MacBooks that are slated to be announced at the end of this year. However, I think that's a little bit misleading because it is very, very unlikely that Apple will actually use the A and X nomenclature that we've seen in iPads and iPhones on the Mac line. Most likely there will be some sort of rebranding and some differentiation between those chips. But for the purposes of today's video and when talking about entry-level MacBooks, we're gonna use A14X as a placeholder. We'll start with the iPhone, the foundation of Apple Silicon. Specifically, we're gonna go back to 2013, which was when the A7 chip that was in the iPhone 5S introduced 64-bit and essentially ushered in the modern era of Apple Silicon in the iPhone. The rate of advancement since then, not just in terms of performance gains, but in terms of advanced technologies, secure enclaves, neural engines, image signal processors, graphics performance, all of that is insane. The A7 chip introduced 64-bit, the motion coprocessor, and the secure enclave to Apple's processors. It was manufactured on a 28 nanometer process. One year later though, the Apple A8 chip brought a die shrink, a move to 20 nanometer process, cut power consumption in half, and boosted GPU performance by 50%. The next year, A9 brought another process shrink, 14 nanometer on the Samsung chips and 16 nanometer on TSMC, as well as big CPU and graphics gains. It also added direct hardware encoding for HEVC and HEIF. Then in 2016 with A10 Fusion, Apple introduced the big little ARM quad core design with two performance cores and two efficiency cores. 2017 brought A11 Bionic with a massive gain in performance. This time we had two performance cores and four efficiency cores that were much faster than A10s. It also featured a performance controller that allowed all six cores to be utilized at the same time where A10 could only switch between performance and efficiency cores. A11 also introduced the neural engine and marked the first implementation of an Apple-designed GPU. And if that wasn't enough, it also shrunk the process from 16 to 10 nanometers. In 2018, the A12 brought the same two plus four big little architecture, but with slightly more powerful performance cores and more frugal efficiency cores, thanks largely to its shrink to seven nanometers, the first seven nanometer chip in a smartphone. It also featured a more powerful GPU and an improved eight core neural engine that developers could now take advantage of. Then with A13, Apple refined their performance cores and added machine learning accelerators, cut down on power consumption, and increased GPU and neural engine performance. 
This pace is prodigious. From 2013 to 2019, they went through four process shrinks, increased from two to six cores, added enough custom hardware processing to fill an airplane hangar, and still managed to cut down on power consumption each year. So what does all of this mean for A14? As I've been saying for a while now and has been confirmed by a few notable leakers, this year's jump from A13 to A14 could be as big as the jump from A10 to A11. Just how big was that actually? Well, take a look at this graph. This is a chart of Apple Silicon since the A7. You can see that the jump to Bionic brought with it absolutely massive performance gains. And that's what we're expecting to see again this year. So how are they going to pull this off? Well, once again, Apple is benefiting from TSMC's rapid manufacturing process improvements with an expected move to five nanometer this year. This allows for greater density, efficiency, and higher clock speeds. We're talking about a mobile chip that could exceed three gigahertz. As a result of this, as Twitter user Soybase pointed out to me, Apple might not even be able to utilize all of this performance in the iPhone. We've seen leaks for quite a while now pegging the A14 at around 44 to 4600 in Geekbench 5. That's quite literally insane. For context, a base model 2020 MacBook Pro scores around 3600, and when you factor in the cost and the power consumption, it gets even crazier. An iPhone uses just six watts of power with passive cooling, whereas a MacBook uses 15 watts. And Apple's chips are way cheaper, as little as $25 to $30 per chip, whereas Intel charges several hundred. But to me, the really interesting thing and where this all ties into the future of the Mac is how close A14 is getting to the A12X and A12Z. Apple released the first X chip with the A5X, in the third generation iPad back in 2012. They needed a more powerful chip with better graphics to drive the Retina display that was new to the iPad at the time. Since then, the X chips have been a staple of iPads and later iPads Pro, marked by extra power and graphics. The current A12 X and Z chips are certainly nothing to laugh at, plowing through 4K, HEVC, even freaking Tomb Raider running in compatibility mode on the developer transition kit. The notion that the A14 could reach this level of performance is not only exciting for this upcoming generation of iPhone, it's also really, really exciting to apply this to the X series chips and future Macs. Take a look at this chart. In blue, we have the normal A series chips. In green are the more powerful X variants. You'll note how the X chips usually reach a similar level of performance to the next generation vanilla A series chip. That would lend some credibility to the reports that state that the A14 is going to be pretty close in performance to the A12X and A12Z. We've seen it happen before and we've even seen some vanilla A series chips outperform the previous generation's X configuration. So if we extrapolate these gains, then on average, the X variant of a chip is 62% more powerful than its corresponding A chip. Using that, we can deduce where the A14 and A14X would fall on this graph. And it's, it's, it's insane. Holy moly! If Apple is actually able to pull something like this off, I for one will be suitably gobsmacked. The way these numbers worked out, this prediction for A14X puts it four points higher than an eight core i9 in a 16 inch MacBook Pro, the 9880H. That's unbelievable. The 9880H is a 45 watt chip and Apple X chips usually use about 18 at most. To give you some more context, let's put this number up with a couple of other Intel Macs. We're hanging here with the big boys. We're talking 5K iMacs, even competing with or getting close to a 9900K, an iMac Pro. That's insane. Now, granted, this is not a scientific guess. In fact, it's more akin to crystal ball reading, but it's definitely not out of the question. See, the average was dragged down slightly by the A9X, which was only about 20% more powerful than the normal A9. That brought the overall average down slightly. The A8X was 80% more powerful than the A8, and the A12X 
was 75% more powerful than the A12. So seeing those kinds of gains, 60 to 80% is absolutely possible. In fact, I showed this chart to a number of Apple leakers and sources, namely Soybase and Gioraku, and both of them said that the chart looked pretty accurate. Now it's important to remember here what I said earlier. A14X is not going to see the inside of a Mac anytime soon. Apple's most likely playbook is to save the highest performance bins of the A14X silicon for Macs. These chips will likely be the exact same processor. As Gioraku informed me, Apple is very, very aggressively binning the A14X to try and get the most performance that they can. So Apple's likely playbook is going to be taking the absolute cream of the crop of the A14X bins and setting those aside for Macs. This kind of stuff happens all the time in CPU binning. Most Core i3s are just Core i5s that didn't meet the same performance requirements and have been scaled back and then sold off as Core i3s. This is kind of an inverse of that, where the best of the A14Xs would be set aside to use in Macs, so they would be largely the same chip but would probably have higher clock speeds and would come with a marginal, roughly five to 10% performance improvement. And then those chips would be rebranded to fit the Mac nomenclature that we don't know yet. We shouldn't have to wait too long to find out about the performance of these new chips. As Gioraku told me, the A14X is currently in its final production validation testing, so it should go into production soon. I think it's safe to say that this is going to be a very exciting generation of Apple chips. The A14, A14X, and then, I don't know, maybe the M14 is what they'll call it. Who knows what they're gonna call their Mac chips, but I think it's gonna be really, really fascinating. Even if we don't see these crazy improvements, even if it's only 20, 30%, the A12Z is already outperforming a lot of lower end Intel chips. So as a first step, I'm already on board with that. I'll be sure to keep you guys updated on any developments surrounding these chips. So make sure you're subscribed here on YouTube and go ahead and follow me over on Twitter at Luke Miani. You'll also find a link in the description to my subreddit, which I definitely recommend you go ahead and check out. And as usual, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And with that, I'll see you all in the next video.